Awesome. Hey, first of all, thank all you guys for uh, tuning in, man. Uh, some of you on the West Coast a little early, some of you guys on the East Coast a little later. Uh, but either way, I mean, it's definitely an honor, obviously, to be on here. Uh, but, you know, it, it's just – it means a lot that you guys actually want to hear what I have to say. Uh, so without further ado, uh, kind of this is, this is my take on how to kind of build RPOs. We're going to start off building a base of understanding of kind of, you know, what RPOs are, what the different types are. Okay, and then we're going to kind of talk about, you know, how to think about them, okay, from the inside out. All right, so I'm not going to talk a whole ton on uh, O-line scheme, like on, you know, the details with that. I'm more just trying to give you principles, like found foundation layers, uh, so that you guys can, you know, change and use the details how you want to do, right? Uh, you know, and uh, from there, you know, understanding these layers, hopefully you can, you know, again, insert the details that fit you guys and what you do, since we're all so different. All right, uh, so building RPOs. All right, guys, there's three basic types of RPOs, okay? And very simply, there's a first level read, okay? Uh, you are reading a first level defender, such as a defensive end, okay? Uh, think like inside zone read with a bubble attached to it, right? I'm reading the end. If I get a pull read, I'm pulling it, and then I can maybe throw it, you know, if the uh, guy over the slot who's running the bubble attacks me, almost like a expanded triple option, if you will, okay? Uh, or I could just throw the bubble pre-snap, right? Without reading anybody, I just know pre-snap, I like the bubble, I like the numbers or leverage or whatever your rules are, okay? But that's really the first type of RPO. The second type, which is where we're gonna spend most of our time, okay, is the second level RPO, okay? Uh, we're reading a linebacker or a walk down safety, making him a second level defender. Think inside zone stick right? Instead of reading the end, we're reading the backer, okay? Instead of the tackle leaving the end for the backer, now the tackle's taking the end, and we're reading the backer, all right? We're just switching that, all right? Then third level read, okay? We are reading a safety. Think like power or inside zone with a glance RPO from the single receiver, right? Uh, or you could read the, uh, if it's 20 personnel, you could read the guy over the two receiver. If he comes up for the run, right, you throw a bubble or something or an out or a hitch, all right. Uh, now, I'm not really going to touch on this at all, except for a basic little diagram. Okay. Uh, you know, with our offense, we're almost exclusively 10 personnel, uh, which this is a great RPO, guys. This is great right here. I don't know why, I'm, why I still have that up. But uh, this is a great RPO here, guys, but it's just not something that we do a lot of. Uh, so again, we'll be focusing on second level RPOs and more specifically off of an inside zone scheme. There's a couple traps in here, okay, but I'm, I'm just using it for simply the three by one look, uh, you know, but overall, mostly we're going to talk about inside zone. All right. Uh, and it'll be a three by one single receiver RPO and a two by two RPO. Okay. Um, there'll be one clip of a, of a RPO to the trips, but again, it's mostly to the single receiver. All right. Uh, now, let's talk about first level reads. Ignore this, okay? Uh, we're just talking about first level reads right now. All right, uh, so we would read the end, right? And we would have inside zone, okay? Uh, we'd be doubling, okay? We'd be locked on here, all right? And then we would be probably doubling this guy to here, right? So that's a first level read. And we'd have some kind of bubble or quick screen over there. All right, so it's a very basic first level read. We can either throw this like pre-snap or we can read the end, right? If he comes down, we give it, he squeezes, we pull it, and then maybe they rotate him down, he tacks us, we flip the ball out to the bubble. All right, so, and then the difference between a, uh, a first level read when we're reading him, the, the tackle's really moving up here. The second level read, we would the tackle would take the end and then we would read him instead. You're just switching that dynamic. That's it. That's really the only difference. All right. Now let's look at first level reads. Okay. Uh, now again, this is, this is kind of something that I really like. Uh, every time we've done it, we've had a lot of success or at least some initial easy success. Uh, I love to run bubble out of stack. Okay. And I'm not talking about where he steps and then kind of backpedals a few steps. The whole point of bubble, guys, is to be on the perimeter instantly, all right, instantly. We're trying to out-leverage this guy. And if we 
him and Han just kind of hang out. He can take a step for the run and then rally and be at the same vertical plane as him, which therefore he's not out leveraging anybody. Okay, but we want to go right now, which is why our splits are condensed. All right, we want to block the outside guy and go right now. So this is great versus teams you know will bracket or zone off a stack. Now, if they stack your stack like that, then it's not a good look. All right, but if they're stacking each stack, okay, that means they can only have six in the box, which our first level read will be great. Okay, uh, and this is the picture of it, right? So we're reading this end, okay. Uh, blocking wise, we're doubling the tackle up, up to, uh, or the three technique, whatever you want to call them, to the backside linebacker. And then we're doubling the one up to the front side backer. We're locked on with the front side tackle on the front side end. Okay, so it's just simple zone read, right? Okay, if we get a, we get a, a bad look, like again, like we get a stack over a stack, okay, then we're just going to read it, right? Okay, this guy's, this guy's nowhere near in a position to be able to help out if a quarterback keeps it. Okay, so the defense may be gap sound here, but they're not hat sound. Okay, we have seven guys and they only have six. This guy's doing nothing. All right, but here we really like this leverage. He's inside. Okay, we knew he's probably going to take a peek in. Okay, and we knew that if we got this look, we were the first one we're throwing a bubble. Okay, because he's going to be stuck, especially if they're bracketing. He's going to at least have to hang out, even if both go out, in case someone comes back in. Okay, because that's his job is first in. Okay, his job is first out. All right, so right now he's already known to throw it, which this is like the second play of the game, I believe. Okay, and you can see right now, okay, we were right. He was going to do his little thing where he looks in real quick. Okay, and now he's screwed. He's, he's too far out of leverage because we're running. Okay, <clears throat> and all we got to do is just bump him. Okay, and then we get a great, like a really, just really easy 15-yard game. Okay, uh, so that's pre-snap. Now, here's a look. We don't like the pre-snap. We've already thrown it, guys. Okay, uh, it's no surprise to them. All right, doing the same thing, running it at the boundary again so we can, if we do keep it, we can still throw it to the field. It's a better play. All right, but now he's much tighter width-wise, right? And over here, we don't have enough room for it to really matter, okay? So we're like, all right, cool. We'll just read the run, okay? So here, the DN definitely gives us a pull read, okay? And again, they may be gap sound, but we are, but they are not hat sound because this is the seventh guy. Here's our seventh guy, okay? Now, he could technically go throw it over here. That was not a big part of what we do. For us, it was more pre-snap or just read the end, all right? But either way, you do it. If you practice it a lot, it may be easy to just flip the uh, bubble out there and he can walk in. All right, but that wasn't something our guy was real good at doing. Okay, uh, but that is technically a first level read and how it works. All right, it's a really extended triple option. Okay, uh, but again, uh, easy 11 yard gain there. Okay, uh, now here's a first level read out of three by one. Okay. Okay, here we're reading the end, okay? And when, when the backer that the tackle's responsible for, for us, walks out, guys, there's a couple things you can do, okay? Uh, you could arc him out to take care of this and still read this, right? That may pull him with this arc, and that may manipulate a give read, okay? Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, for us, you know, if he moved back in here, we are going to just inside release, all right, which is what happened. He thought he was going to move back in, so he inside releases. Okay, this is our read. He jumps in, right? Because even though he's out here, we're not concerned about it because we can still handle six guys with, uh, you know, we can handle five guys with, with five blockers, okay, because he doesn't count because we're reading him. He gives us a definite uh, <clears throat> pull read since he's going in. Okay, so we pull it, all right, and then we're running. Now we don't really run bubbles a lot, okay? We run a flat route, okay? And something for you guys, uh, I changed this. Uh, I saw Southern Utah do it. Uh, you know, uh, Justin Walterscheid, he's the OC up there. He, does, he, he did some of this stuff. And John Boyer over in Northern Colorado, he did some of this. Uh, I know the Patriots do it. Uh, I saw Colgate do it, actually. Uh, but I like this better than bubble because whenever, you, whenever defenses see a guy bubble, they're going to trigger immediately. Everybody's triggering, 
right? Okay, so that's gonna make these guys' blocks extremely hard because they're pretty much have a guy on them right now, okay? And they're having a guy that already knows what it is pushing through, all right? But if he steps up field, okay, uh, like this, okay, to the defense, this is a pass concept. It could be flood, right? It could be some kind of curl flat. I don't know, whatever concept you want to run with three runs of flat, okay? You're going to at least get a vertical stem for a few yards from these guys before they maybe run double slant or whatever, okay? But there's a lot of release sequences that look like this. So you can see this guy right now, he's not triggering on a bubble because it's not a bubble. It looks like a pass concept to him, okay? Look at him. If he was to have gone backwards like a bubble, he would have been, he would have been gone, okay? Because he has a direct view of this, all right? Uh, so uh, for us, I like this a lot more, okay, uh, than, uh, than a bubble. It, it makes this easier because if they're backpedaling, that's just an easier block farther downfield, okay, which is what we want anyways, all right? <clears throat> but, I mean, he could have thrown this and been right, right, because it kept everybody from triggering, okay? Uh, but that's the first level read, okay, that we kept, okay? And this is the exact same concept, exact same run. Okay, in the exact same uh, blocking assignments here. Okay, what they were doing here is they were going to corner blitz. Okay, and they were going to bring seven people. Okay, they have a safety that's walked over here, and he's trying to walk down late. Okay, now uh, there's no way we can block seven. It's impossible, right? We only have uh, five blockers. We can read one. Okay, the numbers still don't add up. All right, but we did know since they're bringing seven, which is a look we've seen all game, we could just throw a bubble. All right. Because to us, if he's about to blitz, it's two, okay, it's two defenders on three offensive players, which we like, okay? And he knew that pre-snap, okay? So he gets rid of the ball, right? And you can't bring seven guys. It's, it's impossible, all right? Uh, so now that's just one of our good looks. I mean, you could get a normal, like, cover four, right, where they have a two relator apexing these two, okay? And then, uh, you know, it doesn't look exactly like this, all right? Uh, so – and this say this guy would be over here, right? Or they'd be over shifted one, one gap, okay? Uh, which is how it should look to a, a three by one look, all right? Uh, and now again, that would initiate a bubble because it's two on three, all right? But that that's first level read. You saw one where we kept it. You saw one where we gave it, all right? And both three by one and two by two. All right, third level reads, guys. Okay, uh, it is irrelevant to me what concept you run run game wise. Okay, or where you're back or tight end, or it doesn't even matter. All right, the only thing that matters is we have six on six here. Okay, we have six blockers for six defenders. Okay, so when you're thinking about making a third level read, where are they going to put their force defender? Okay, are they going to rotate this way? Or are they going to rotate that way? Right, in this instance, usually if you have the support player here that got to bring a guy down, that would become your read. Even if he starts high, that's still your read. He comes down you could throw a glance RPO, right? Uh, so it's all depends on what you guys do schematically in the run game. So that's the third level read. Okay, again, that's all I'm really gonna touch on here. Uh, but those are the three types of, uh, or two of the three types of RPOs. Now, this is the meat of our conversation here. All right, so second level RPO basics. First off, we want to choose a pass concept that beats the coverage we are seeing. Okay, or at least the two or three base coverages we are going to see. All right, uh, then we want a run. I'm sorry, fellas, that is uh, one of my alarms. Uh, we want a run that exploits the, uh, the defensive front. Okay, and then third of all, we want to choose a defender that has an interior run gap responsibility, but also has to relate to a primary receiver in the pass game. By primary, I just mean like a principal receiver, right? If I'm running double slant as an RPO with two receivers, I want the guy that's relating to the inside receiver, okay, to have a run gap conflict, okay? If I have a guy that is not directly in the – say I'm, I'm going ten, from 10 personnel, I want a guy that is directly part of defending the six run gaps, okay? Uh, and responsible for that receiver and however I manipulate that, okay? Now, something that's very important is don't, especially in inside zone RPOs, think of building a play as a half man, half slide type concept, like 
in the pass protection. But instead of half man, half slide, it's half man, half run. Okay, so what do I mean by that? All right, so let's talk about this. All right, so say, uh, look at this bottom picture here. All right, so this is a two by two look. These are the inside receivers. All right, so here I want to slant, right? Because if, if I have this front, this will is responsible, okay, for this B gap, okay? I do not want to read this guy because he's responsible for B, he's responsible for A, they're all responsible for the other gaps, he's responsible for nothing, okay? So I'm not really conflicting anybody if I try to read him, okay? I can run a pass concept that puts him in a bind and read him if the run is going this way and the double team would be going over here, right? Okay, but... uh. I want a guy that's directly conflicted, okay, with a run gap and a receiver. Now, here's a three-by-one look, okay, and here's a three-down front, okay? Now, this defender right here is part of the six defenders defending six run gaps, okay? Whether he's going C and he's going B or he's B and he's C, it's irrelevant, all right? But he directly relates to a receiver and his past responsibility, and then he also directly relates to an interior run gap. Okay, uh, so now let's talk about the protection part of it. Okay, and this is really what I learned this from John Boyer over at Northern Colorado. He's at Oregon State now, uh, but I thought this is so smart and it simplified how I thought about things. Okay, yeah, we want to get a guy that affects a run gap and we want a guy that is, you know, directly relates to a receiver. Okay, but more specifically when you're teaching it, okay, if I'm running a half man, half side protection and my back is protecting on this side, Okay, the slide is gonna start at the first uncovered guy, which is him. So I'm gonna have a four man slide this way. So we're just talking about drop back protection right now, not RPOs. Okay, because my back, okay, is gonna have, is gonna insert here, really responsible for him. Okay, and then my, my tackle here is gonna be manned up on the end, but these four are going to slide really for these four, right? That's really the, the main situation. We're, we're saying that he's kind of far out here to the field with this, uh, with this guy. There's, a little, there's some hashes right here, all right? Uh, but think about your RPOs like that, okay? So with that being said, okay, now if we're running the ball this way, which would have been the same way our slide was in a pass protection, okay? Instead of sliding back, we're gonna slide up to block the same four guys, right? We're sliding up instead of back. And then he's still manned, just like he would in the pass protection. So the slide, or the run, if you will, starts here, just like it would. In slide, they're going back and accounting for these four. In zone, they're going up and accounting for these four. Okay, and then the back, yeah, he, he's get, getting mesh, but if the ball's pulled, then he just goes back to his normal protection responsibilities. So really, if it's half man, half slide, or an RPO, a second level RPO, you're teaching the same concept. Instead of sliding back, you're sliding up, okay? So hopefully that helps you guys think about RPOs. And that's what I mean by building a foundation, all right? And you can build play action into this, which we'll get to later, all right? And if we're at the end, if we have some questions, and that would be, I know uh, when I did this talk before, that was a question people had, and uh, that's how we build our play action game, okay? Uh, so now, let's look at this picture here. This guy is not directly related to a run gap, is he? He's not, okay? Because he's related to, I believe this is, a, this is a one. So he's got B and he's got A over here, okay? And we're running the ball to the right, okay? Inside zone to the right. So our double team is going to move to him, right? And then we're, uh, we're locked on over here, all right? Uh, but he is our read, okay? So now he, he may not directly relate to a receiver, but he does because we were running a levels concept, okay? And what I, mean, what I said earlier was we want to, if he's not directly related to a receiver or, and a run gap, then let's find a, a concept that beats him where he cannot take both, okay? And then he then becomes part of it. And if he fits a run gap, he can't fit the extra route, all right? So in levels, he can either take the dig and leave a five yard in, or he can take the five yard in and leave our dig. And our dig route here is based off of the depth of the defender, okay? So it's not a 10-yard dig. Whenever he gets over the top of him is when he wraps, okay? So it may look like double slant or double in, okay? But if, if he walls him and runs with him, then he's taking himself out of the picture, 
and we have a wide open five yard in and no one in the alley. Okay. Uh, so here we're, we're looking at our read. He's definitely stepping up. Now the quarterback is going to look always at the first route. Okay. And right now he's covered, isn't he? So then he progresses. Anyone covering him? Nope. Levels is a great too high beater for this reason. Okay. Uh, so then he just throws it to the five yard in. Okay. And that's an eight yard gain right there, guys. Eight yards. Okay. Now, so look at this picture from this direction. Now let's think about the slide rules. Okay. Again, this is, this guy is like a two I, I believe. Okay. So that initiates the slide this way because we are running the ball this way. All right. And here's that picture, the slide or the zone, right. Is, is initiated from here. So we're doubling to him. We're locked on there. Okay. We got him. Okay. Now we're, we're manned on this dude and this is our read. Okay. And the second the quarterback pulls it, now he does not do a good job here. He should be bending back, which is where the zone would hit anyways, right? Uh, most likely. He should be bending back for his now protection responsibility, which is no different than it would be in a, pa in a drop back pass concept, okay? So he should be bending back here. We should be protected. Thankfully, he tries to drop out, which is a terrible idea, all right? And he looks here. He's covered, so he just progresses to the next guy. Okay, uh, now let's look at this. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, guys. All right, now let's look at this from the other way. If we're running the ball this way, guys, okay, this is probably even a, an even better look because here we have the six interior run gap defenders, okay, or six base run gap defenders. All right, and if we're running zone this way, all right, this guy directly relates to what looks like the A gap here, okay? And then he also relates directly to a receiver, okay? So this, it would have probably been better of me to call the RPO this way, all right? Uh, and even if we call levels, it still works the same because if he steps up, the level is, the dig is based off his depth, which then just becomes an in route at five yards, all right? So uh, we would be reading this guy, and then the double team would be moving to him. And the running back would be bending back if this guy steps up. Okay? So, uh, so what, whichever way you want to run it, if you're going to run it this way, he's not your read. But you need to find a, a concept that will beat him and puts him directly in a bind. Okay, guys? Uh, all right. Let me delete some of this mess. Uh, all right, now let's look at another video. Now, this is a, our only three-by-one look, okay? But this is a great look, guys. You want to run an RPO in a four, against a 4-2 box because you know directly who you, who's getting who, who's got what gap, okay? And they have the least amount of people to stop the run, all right? They have no extra defender, all right? So really, no matter which way you run it here, you're right because he directly relates to the single receiver and he directly relates to the three. All right, so we're running the zone this way. Okay, he's the A-gap defender, right? We have two threes here, so they're both technically A-gap defenders, at least pre-snap from what we can tell, okay? Uh, but the double team is always pushing run side, okay, as normal, all right? And he's our read. So right now, <clears throat> and we have another levels concept called with the same rules. Okay, so he drops out, which would obviously – he should be giving the ball, guys. He should be. I don't know why he's not, okay? Uh, I was not happy about this at first. I was like, what the hell is he doing, okay? Uh, and now it is his responsibility if he doesn't get the ball, okay? He's technically responsible for this guy, okay? Because, again, it's just like the half man, half slide, all right? Uh, they're accounting for these three, right? And then he's got this guy, which will go to the tight here in a minute. But – he should be looking for him, but it does, he's too far out, right? We should be handing the ball off. Now, the great thing about breaking over the under coverage, okay, is here we wrap around it and we throw it, okay? And we just got one-on-one, -on -one, he misses a tackle, and we score, okay? So it turns a uh, bat, what was a very frustrating play for me in the box, to a really good play, okay? Uh, and that's why we like the levels, because he can't guard both, right? He can't guard both. All right, uh, <clears throat> so let's look at it from a 
type perspective. Now let's think about our uh, half man, half slide, right? If the run's going this way, it's a terrible arrow, I apologize. Uh, then the, the first uncovered guy is the center. So that's where the slide or the zone, if you will, is initiated. So we'd be doubling the three up and then we're locked on here. And then since we have a three, okay, and a five, then we're gonna just set, set them or however you wanna block them, guys. You can still zone block them if you want. You can set them, okay, it's up to you guys and what you're good at. Uh, last year we were more gonna zone block them, okay. The year before I had a different line coach. He wanted to pass set them, which was great because it's gonna bring them downfield and open up the hole even more. Uh, so it's really up to you guys. Again, I'm not really here to talk about how they get it done, just what they're getting done and why. All right, so that wouldn't, so that's how the play is gonna look, right? We got manned up here, uh, doubling to this guy, sorry, doubling the three to this guy in here. So it should be a big gap, okay? And we're reading him, he drops out. We, if we hand the ball off here, we're hitting this front side and we got a great run going. It's gonna be an eight or nine yard run, right? Uh, so that's what it should look like, guys. Uh, just like a half man, half slide. All right, uh, now let's talk about protecting the play, okay? Con pass concepts are great. Again, it's really gonna be dependent on coverage or what you guys are good at doing, okay? Uh, now, one of the most important aspects to running good RPO is protecting it, okay? Uh, and you need to have a way, especially in zone, to pr protect both the front side and back side, okay? We protect a, the front side with a push call and the back side with a home call, okay? And uh, I was really unfamiliar with this the first two years I ran a lot of RPOs as a coordinator, uh, but last year, uh, or last spring, I should say, at Fort Valley, I really had a lot of help from uh, my offensive staff, and we really kind of put our heads together and thought of these, all right? Uh, so push call, okay? Push call handles the front side. All this means is we're pushing the double team, okay, or teams if it's three down, Okay, to the front side by one person. Okay, and what this will do, guys, it will move the read to the front side by one person. All right, because most of the time they cannot blitz both sides. They're going to need a flat defender somewhere. All right, so if they're going to blitz the front side, the, you're most likely not, it's not possible to get a backside blitz. All right, uh, now uh, I'm going to skip this picture. This is actually easier. Okay, because if you understand this picture, you understand four down. Okay, and this is also the most likely scenario it happens. It really doesn't happen a lot in three down. All right, uh, so push call. If we're running zone, okay, if this is our picture pre-snap, we got cover four, he's out over by the hash, so he's not a threat. Okay, we're gonna double, right, double, and then we're gonna lock on the end. Again, it's like that kind of half slide type rules. All right, uh, we're getting these guys that are threats. All right, now, he's our read. Okay, now what happens, guys, okay, if this guy walks up? Now they're rotating. They're playing cover three, okay? Uh, so now this is a problem. We have an extra guy, okay, that we can't account for that is directly fitting a run gap, okay? So that's when we would make, a, make this push call, okay? And this is how it would look. Where's my – all right. So then we're pushing – to him, we're pushing to him, all right? If we're still locked on here, that doesn't change. And then now, our read uh, moves, moves from the will to the peg. It just moves one guy, okay? All the responsibility is just push one guy to the front side, all right? Now, and the reason I'm not too worried about this is if he is in here, how on God's green earth is he gonna cover the flat? He can't if this guy blitzes, right? Most likely, if they're rotating, they're going to use this guy, okay, especially if he's off the ball, okay? Uh, whoops. Uh, they're going to use this guy to be the two relator, a.k.a. the flat defender. He's got to relate to somebody because he's still got a, a gap. They would use these six guys to fit the gaps, and he would have to be relating to a receiver, as would he. All right, does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense, guys. Uh, so that's a push call. Four down, three down, and – and four down, you, can, you only have one double team, okay, especially in 10 personnel. So you, you can only push one guy over and you read and move to the other guy. So it, get, it gets simpler in four down. All right, so technically right now, 
pre-snap, this, this could be identified as a four down. Okay, for us, we, we ID'd it as a three down. And this is a really good clip because you can see our quarterback here making a push call. He's pointing right at him. Okay, now if he didn't say anything and they ID'd it four down, we'd be good. Okay, but uh, better safe than sorry is what I told the quarterbacks. Push it so we know that the first double team goes to him. Okay, then the second, so that's the first, ah, oh, dang it. Uh, so that is the first double team using a one there. The second double team goes to him. Okay, and then the read would be here. Okay, now pre snap, there's really no one over here. So uh, there, I mean, it kind of was what it was. All right, uh, and he can't blitz because he someone's got to play the two. Okay, and they're about to rotate this way, guys. All right, uh, so kind of a jacked up look. Now here we ran a streak with a five yard in to beat this guy. All right, because we knew we were getting a lot of cover three. All right, so here's our read. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so he comes up, which means he should be bending back for him, right? Just like he would be in protection if he's going to this side. Okay, now again, our quarterback always reads the inside guy first, okay? And he gets right on past this guy, which means we're throwing it here. He should probably throw a one ball and pull him in, okay? Because the safety never really rotates because his eyes are in the backfield. He sees run to his side. All right, so this should be an easy play. Now he tries to put some air under it, and he gets a little greedy and misses him. All right, but the reality is, is if this two relator, which is the two receiver, relates and walls him, who's covering the five-yard end, guys? Nobody. Okay, so that way he's always in a bad position. Okay, even though we have a guy between the inside most receiver and our read. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you can see him making that push call there. Okay, again, this is our read, right? So all of our double teams are pushing to the front side. The guy out, you can't see, and this is the, where the second double team goes. Okay, That's, he's go, he should be going there, and he should be bending back for here. Okay. All right, now, this is kind of the, this is my favorite. I think this is the most effective. I don't think the push call is all that innovative or anything. Uh, that's just the way we get to the, you know, move the blocks front side by one. Uh, but I do love the home call for a couple reasons. All right, and the home call is to counter a backside threat either outside of the read, okay, or the appearance of a blitz from the read. Now, you guys need to understand, again, we're, we're putting down a foundational layer here, okay? So we got to talk about blitz indicators. There's three basic blitz indicators, depth, okay? Now, is his normal depth compromised? Okay, usually the linebackers are at four or five, so now they're, he's at two. That's a good indicator you're getting a blitz. Posture. Does he go from a square stance where his feet are parallel to the line of scrimmage to a two-point stance where he's, you know, got one foot in front of the other and he's leaning over his front leg? Okay, and then safety rotation. If you got a linebacker close to the normal and he's got his front foot in front of his back, right, he's in a split stance, okay, and you lean over that front foot and the safety's rotating to him, dude, you're about to get blitz, okay, because most teams are going to rotate to the pressure to provide that, that defender that is leaving. Okay, uh, or that second level defender that is now leaving. All right, and they're using a third level defender to replace him. Okay, when a home call is made, we're going to move the running back to the other side, which is a really big reason why I love this so much. Okay, because of the new defensive trends to stop RPOs. All right, and then uh, it is only going to be a false mesh with the running back. Okay, so we're still meshing with him. To the defense, it looks like we just check the play the other way. Okay. Because we're instead of running it, we're running inside zone to the right, but we're moving the running back to the left. And he's meshing running to the left. All right. And the running back will take the blitzer. Okay. Or the read. All right. Now, the quarterback is still reading the read key, but if the read drops, the quarterback, okay, is the runner. So it is still an RPO, but it really just becomes a quarterback lead RPO. And the, the mesh is all smoke and mirrors, but the defense doesn't know that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I mix this up. My brother says this all the time. Uh, but uh, in this instance, when the quarterback becomes a possible threat to throw and run, okay, the defense may be actually, it should be gap sound, but they will not be hat sound, okay? Uh, <clears throat> now, this is a, so this is a four down look. Say we're working a single receiver RPO, okay? So 
we got four down, we're doubling the nose to the mic, no big deal, right? Uh, again, the, the slide starts the first uncovered, right? Uh, now, what happens, okay, if uh, this reed walks up into the B gap, right? Even with a mesh and trying to bend him back, you're not going to have time, guys. He's going to be in your face so fast. He's, what, five yards away from you? He's got, he'll be there in three steps, okay? There's no way this running back is going to be in a position to make this happen. Or if he walks outside of here, okay, and remember, he's locked on. And even if you say, okay, get him, well, then now you have the end in your face, all right? Uh, so he's still going to stay locked on to the end, right? Some guys do this by saying, we'll just run zone read now, right? He's, just, he's still reading the same guy, but if – if he takes the running back, pull it and run. Okay, but for me, I love to pass. I'm trying to pass. And if we're going to have run mesh, let's get people out of the throwing windows and still throw the ball. Okay, so uh, if he walks up, right, your read walks up, you're still going to read your read. Let's say his number is 32. Okay, you're going you're gonna to look at the defense, right? You see your read walked up. Say, hey, easy, easy. Home, home, home. Bump him over here and say home 32, home 32, okay? And then he's gonna mesh. You're still gonna have this mesh. And he's gonna go straight for 32 right here who's walked up on the edge and he's gonna meet him. He's gonna mesh and go straight to block him. Now, if he comes down, that is obviously a throw read. They don't have a flat defender now, guys. He doesn't exist, okay? Uh, and you have whatever slant or glance or curl or out, wide open with no one to beat but the corner okay so it's really the same thing but if he walks up say he walks up in here okay he's he's threatening like he's gonna blitz and you home him right home 32 so the running back's gonna mesh and take a track here and then he drops well guys then you're just running all you're doing is running quarterback lead rpo right the quarterback's gonna mesh okay i'll clear the picture okay the uh i'm sorry guys my phone's uh ringing uh you're gonna mesh and then he's gonna go and just lead and you're gonna mesh with him and then just follow him because you got you got a double team here right you got guys for all of these guys okay and the next guy that can tackle you is a safety right so guys that's a good situation to be in all right now if we look at it from a, a three down standpoint right if this read walks up, okay, it's the same principle, right? We're gonna move him over, home call it, mesh with him, okay? And he's gonna block him. If he blitzes, we're still throwing, okay? And it's just a great play action because not only is he gonna leave, they're gonna leave. They're gonna step up too, okay? Uh, so you're getting all these guys out of the way, all right? And you're protected. And if he drops, great. You have an extra hat to block for you and the quarterback's running. Okay, so the mesh is only smoke and mirrors. Now, the reason why I like this so much, guys, is what a lot of guys are doing is they're going to back gap. They're going to see where your running back is, okay? And they're going to say, obviously, if the back is on the left, the RPO is over here on the left between these two, okay? So they're going to use other guys. He'll hold, okay? And then they can use these guys, okay, to fit the six gaps. Because if you're reading over here, what does it matter if you leave this guy? Okay. And in zone, that's hard to say, okay, read him and then have this guy hit you in the face from the backside. Right. So that's an easy way for them to see your back. Okay. Or if it's in pistols, see the way you turn. If you're turning and looking this way, if you're looking that way, they know to what's called back gap it. Right. Uh, so if you then put the back over here, okay and he's meshing this way, they're gonna back gap, okay, this way, okay? And they're gonna leave this guy to hold. But the reality is, even though the back starts here, you're still reading him. So it completely messes up their rules, all right? And it gives you an extra hat, because most back gap teams play too high, all right? And even if they don't back gap, they just try to hold, okay? They just try to hold your RPO side and fold late to try to manipulate a give read and then rally and tackle them for a two-yard gain, which is terrible for us, right? And say, and most OCs say, listen, if, if you don't know, hand it, okay? Uh, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to say, all right, he doesn't know. I'm not making a read, so now I'm going to fold, all right? Uh, if that is the case, then still, if you bump him over here, he's going to hold, 
right? And you're still reading this guy, and he doesn't know that he's, he's really the side being read, okay? Uh, and that's why I really like it. It was really effective for us, okay? So uh, this team played a lot of unsound defenses, all right? We scored a lot of points on them. So, I mean, this one doesn't make any sense, all right? Uh, but they got six in the box. We're running inside zone this way, which this clip was cut short, okay? So we missed that. All right, but he did bump the back over here, even though it's inside zone to the right, okay? Uh, so they didn't change, but he home called this guy because for us, the double team's going to the front side backer. This would be our read, okay? Now it's not our read walking up, it's this extra guy. So we can still home call him and this can still be our read. I'll take a chance with the guy having to run 10 yards before I get off quick game, right? And we're running levels again, so it should be, just a, he's going to run out and run his five yard in. He's going to run and break whenever he gets over him, which he's blitzing. So it should almost be like a slant. Okay. And I'll take a, a quick, easy slant or five yard in throw with this guy having 10 yards to come in and get this. All right. Uh, so even though we are homing this guy, okay, he's still our read. Okay. Now, if he was to stay out here and he was to step up, we just home the read. Okay. So it doesn't matter either way. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Now, if this is a hold and fold team, they're going to try to hold this side and not realize you're still reading over here, okay? Uh, now, let's see how this turns out. Okay, he gives him a quick little fake, which he should ride this a little longer, okay? Uh, and then this guy, I'm sorry, this thing keeps popping up. Uh, and then he, he could throw it to this, but this is too quick for him, okay? So then he just squeezes it, squeezes it and puts it into the five-yard end, guys, right? That's easy. Okay, and I would say we did this probably 20 plus times during the year, the uh, home call. Okay, and uh, I think we ran it once and it was like a five yard run. So, and he wasn't really the best runner. And so we got five yards. I mean, I'll take five yards. Uh, but every other time, guys, it's a throw. Okay, it's a throw. Because if they're home folding, they're going to think that this is the side that is not being read. If they're blitzing, they're pulling guys out of the throwing windows. Either way, you're, gonna, you're most likely right that he's blitzing for home calling it and i always told the quarterbacks if you don't know home call it guys home call it all right <clears throat> okay and you can see the uh the o-line they're blocking zone this way okay but all the all these guys see is low hats and running bag mesh okay and don't ask me what this guy's doing okay he should be going they should be doubling over here and it should be like this. All right, I don't know why he comes back. All right, this guy should be free, but we should be able to get it off in plenty of time. Because instead, they leave a D-line free, which makes no sense. But uh, All right, so this is the only real concept I'm going to break down for you. Uh, and this is by no means my concept. Uh, I learned about it through other coaches who had studied at Oklahoma State and Baylor. Uh, and this is a single receiver RPO. Uh, Baylor called it choice. Uh, I don't know what OSU called it. But uh, they stole it from Baylor. I guess now I'm stealing it from them through other coaches. Uh, but this is our base single receiver concept. All right. And it's GPS because it stands for go, post, sit. All right. It's super easy to remember. All right. We have a choice route, so there is no point in us calling two things choice. And this is easy. Go, post, sit, guys. Easy. All right. The decision point is eight to 10 yards. Okay. And no matter what, uh, <clears throat> uh, and no matter what, pressed or not pressed is irrelevant. If he's pressed, he's still getting to 8 to 10 before uh, he makes his read. All right, the 8 to 10 is non-negotiable. All right, and at 8 to 10, whatever situation he's in, that's what he's doing. Okay, so if the DB bails or is capping him, he's on top. When, when we reach 8 to 10 yards, we're going to sit and retrace our stem. Okay, back down. All right, if the DB has outside leverage, we're going to run a post or a glance, whatever you want to call it, guys. Uh, and then uh, the DB, if the DB is beat by 8 to 10 yards, we're running a go. Okay, and what it really becomes, guys, is a one-size-fits-all. A lot of us, and me included, before I started running this, uh, you'd have to guess right. I want to run a glance here. Okay, well, then, you know, the safety's rolling to you or whatever. It's not good. Or, this, or the corner's in, pressed inside leverage and we just can't get inside. Okay, uh, and then I want to run a sit here, but then they run cover two. Okay. Uh, and that's not that great unless you convert it to a go. <clears throat> and then uh, I want to run a go here, but then they drop off and play deep cover three, which is great. 
unless you want to read it and run a sit. All right, I mean, which is bad unless you want to read and run a sit. All right, but if you're calling a route, you've got to guess right. All right, which you can, don't get me wrong, but uh, why guess when you, can let the, when you can let the players in the field make the defense wrong, okay? All right, so here we go. <clears throat> so we had a seven-man box, but it's not really seven-man because they had a safety high. They were going to drop him. We knew that. So uh, really the double team's going to him, okay? And then this is our read because we're running the inside zone to the right, all right? Now we're pressed right here, okay? And there's not really a safety, other than this guy, there's not really a safety that's a threat to him. So we're hoping this is a go route. All right, and pre-snap quarterback should have a good idea, but it's really irrelevant, guys. They should just worry about their read, okay? <clears throat> Which he hangs out. Okay, again, this guy dropped out, so our double team should go to him. Okay, back should be bending back for him, okay? And uh, he's looking at this, he pulls it, then he gets his eyes on the receiver. And guess what, guys? He's already about eight to 10, okay? About eight, right? Especially off press, which means if it's not press, he should be at 10, okay? So really the break, the decision point is timed up with when the quarterback should be looking. And there is almost no time where he really had to wait unless the receiver screwed up their depth. So it's really irrelevant because even if you have the, the route locked to like a sit or something or a glance, he's still going to have to visually find him because there's a bunch of people in the way, right? So it's really irrelevant. So as long as he reads the read, he makes a good read, find the, the area the receiver's in, which should be that eight to 10 yard area on the numbers. Okay, and then you'll see his break from there. And obviously he's beating him. So we throw a go route and he's wide open. We just drop it because we're playing in a tropical storm on a grass field. Okay, it was just pouring rain. All right, but either way, it was a good read by the uh, quarterback and a great read by the receiver. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now here we get a cover one look. We got three over three, safety plus over here. Okay, we got a six man box, which we love. We're running an inside zone to the right again. Our double team's moving here. Okay, uh, and then we're reading the backside backer. Down here, guys. Uh, once we got inside the red zone, this became an automatic back shoulder, okay? An automatic back shoulder, if, especially if we knew we were getting man, all right? So we got an easy, clean box here, okay? No need to push or home call anything, okay? He's reading him. He obviously steps up because it's man and it's inside the red zone. Can't give up a run, okay? And then we just stay, stay in the back shoulder area, okay? Again, this is what I was saying earlier. Comes a back shoulder and then put it on his back shoulder. Okay. And that's something that we used a lot last year. So that was really good to us with the guys that we had. If you don't have guys that are great, okay, at back shoulders, okay, don't do it. All right. Do uh, run a slant or maybe manipulate it. Okay. If you have a certain route that, you know, in a man situation, you know your guys better at, manipulate, you know, the way you game plan to, all right, it's a glance here because we know it's man and we know the safety's not a threat and we're great at glance. But we were great at back shoulders. That's what we did. Okay. All right. Uh, so here's our read. This is, they kind of like wanted to make us think it was a four down, uh, but it was really a three. This guy would sometimes rush the C gap if he thought it was run. If he thought it was pass, he would drop and be the flat defender. So it was an easy way to really get the flat defender out of the way. We we're running trap here, but let's just use our inside zone rules, guys. We can double team, front, first double team goes here. Second double team goes here. Backside linebacker, okay, is this guy if we're running zone, okay? And we're running gap scheme at him, so it's still our read. Uh, but, again, we're, we're trying to think inside zone, right? That's the extra guy. Uh, we had the guard for him, all right? Uh, but now let's look at the receiver's route, okay? Uh, now, obviously, the read stepped up, and we have inside leverage on this guy, so we run a glance. Now, if the quarterback puts a little air on it, this is a touchdown, right? And if we look at it from the type, okay, again, this is our read, okay? You could say, hey, this is four down and set these two, okay? And then double up to here, get him, and then read him if you wanted to. Or you could say, hey, he, we know he's not going to rush all the time then. Okay, you could do that, all right? Uh, and then this would be your read, all right? But again, we're running gap scheme here, okay? Uh, but the most important lesson here is we have inside leverage. Guys, there's no safety inside, is there? And he's beat him uh, bad. 
So if we lead him and put a little air under it, I mean, we're walking in the end zone. Okay, now we bobble it a little bit, uh, but hey, 30-yard uh, gain is a 30-yard gain, especially that quickly. Okay, uh, now, now we have inside zone here running to the left. Okay, inside zone running to the left. All right, so we're going to double team to the first backer, double team to the second backer. Okay, he's our read because we got three down here. All right, and now he steps up. Okay, so it's obviously going to be a pull. And now he's capped at about eight to 10 yards. So then he decides to sit. Okay. <clears throat> now here we go again. Okay, now we're pressed, legitimately pressed, right? Uh, he's our read again because we're running. Let's just think inside zone rules, run inside zone that way. Okay, that would be our read. Okay. Uh, so let's watch the receiver here. Read obviously steps up. Okay, now he's capped. They're not going to play in the other in the other play we ran the post. It was against this team. They're not playing outside leverage anymore after that. So we're going to play inside leverage and play on top. Okay, so we just sit it down. Now the quarterback's waiting here because he is way too deep. He's breaking it like 12 yards. All right. So that's way too deep. We want it to be a little quicker than that. So he doesn't have to wait. All right. We also don't get a block by our running back, which is a problem. All right. Uh, but either way, it's an easy completion. There's a 20 yard gain almost. Okay, now, uh, one of the best things I can suggest, guys, is especially with single receiver, okay? Especially with single receiver, all right? It's always great to have a quick screen over here. And more specifically with inside zone, because inside zone is built to cut back. So if you don't have guys blocking these guys and they wanna fold late, Inside zone, especially in RPO, is going to cut back anyway, so they're going to be rendered useless uh, if no one's blocking them. It's really on, the, on these guys to stop the inside zone, not really any of these guys, okay? Uh, but here we, we made the rule that if you get two guys inside this box, which goes from the number three receiver to about 10 yards, and if there's only two people inside this box, okay, then we're going to throw the screen. Now, I know he's plus pretty far out, okay? I would normally say don't do it. Just read the RPO, which we'll get to in a sec, okay? But this is also our best player. They're playing soft. We think we can get it, okay? And we run a little stop screen. We X block it. He's got him. He was confused. He thought he was supposed to run the, the flat route, but he's really X block, and he's really supposed to just go straight here, okay? Uh, now, for reading the RPO, he's our read, as, as ha has been for these last few clips, okay? Uh, so we got him. We're coming out here. Okay. Throw the stop. This guy's too far away. He's too far away. We split the X. Okay. And get a, a eight yard gain. Now let's read the RPO guys. Okay. So we read him. He steps up. We're capped again. So we sit it down. And this is a much better timing wise. He's still open guys. Like either way we're right. So the push and pull with having to have three over three to stop a screen, okay? Uh, let me more specifically detail this, okay? If they're gonna have to have six gap defenders. They can either move him out and leave five in the box, okay? Uh, which is a problem. That means every, any, any team in America can run the ball, all right? Or they can leave him in and rotate a safety down, okay? Well, then we can just read one of the six guys in the box and then throw a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a safety that's no, is running away from this side, okay? Uh, and if they want to rotate this way to have an extra guy and six fitters for this read route, they're going to have to pull this safety over there, and it's still two on three. There's only so many ways they can fit this. They're going to have to zero pressure it to stop it, which means they're going to have to put seven in the box, okay, which you can very easily have a check for, all right? Just check to quick game or something, all right? Uh, but that push and pull is really important, okay? So I really like a single receiver RPO with the screen. I really think it's easy for your quarterbacks. Two on three, rock and roll. Five in the box, rock and roll. Okay, six in the box, three over three, work the one-on-one, -on -one. okay? <clears throat> so let me go to this last clip here, guys. Okay, uh, here we're running inside zone right, so we're doubling first backer, doubling to the second backer, reading him, okay? Uh, that's our read. Okay, he drops, okay, and they try to match the receivers over here, 
okay, because we had another concept on, all right, and we get a nice, easy nine-yard run. Okay, there's only so many things they can do, guys. All right, I mean, that's the end of my talk. I hope that has helped. Okay, uh, Coach, is there any questions uh, so far? Didn't have any in there, uh, but <clears throat> as we're uh, coaching, and what I'll do is if you want to share your contact information or email, Twitter, um, and if anybody has any questions that they want to drop in the chat while we're doing that, um, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, feel free, guys, uh, to, to drop a couple questions in there. But, Coach, do you mind sharing your, your Twitter info? I'm going to do it right here in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, feel free, guys, if anybody has any questions in regard to Coach's talk. And, you know, obviously, once he shares his info, um, you know, you'll be able to reach out to him and um, ask any questions there as well. But <clears throat> definitely appreciate you jumping on with us, Coach. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me. No, absolutely. Informative talk, man. It was great. Um, you know, this one, along with everybody else, you know, will be on the drive, which is good. Always good to kind of check back and, and, and rewatch some stuff. You might have missed something along the way. Um, here's a question, Coach. When you call RPOs, uh, when you call RPOs, are the route concepts full field at a two by two or just the read side? Can you say that again, Coach? When you call RPOs, are the route concepts full field out of two by two or just the read side? You know, I could answer that question real easy here uh, on this uh, presentation. Uh, let me uh, go back to two by two real quick. Uh, all right, uh, this one is, is really good. Let me take off the annotations, take off this mess. Uh, okay, this is one's really good, okay. Uh, in two by two, I'm gonna have verticals on the front side, okay, away from the RPO. And the reason for that is to pull the safety and maybe even the two or later and definitely the corner, A, out of the run fits, okay? But B, if we do complete maybe a, a slant or a dig or a post, especially if it's cover two, okay, we're going to pull the safety away. If we complete it, it's only one-on-one. -on -one. If he doesn't make the tackle, it's a touchdown, okay? And uh, this is actually a perfect example. There is a safety here. You can see his shadow. And in this specific one, when we're working the trips, I have him run off. Okay, to pull the safety. And you can see here that we throw this and he beats one guy and there's no one to help. If you just block this guy, this, the, the single receiver safety or the front side safety will just turn his eyes immediately to his next threat, right? So that way you can, I don't have concepts, but I have them running verticals. I used to have a quick screen on the front side of two by two, but again, that was the same problem. They would just turn their eyes immediately to the, the routes coming to them and tackle them. Okay, or and sometimes have a chance to pick it off. But after we changed this, which I learned from University of Hawaii, uh, they, uh, they were, I mean, it, it really helped us tremendously. Obviously, this is a 36 yard touchdown uh, because of it. <clears throat> Uh, another question here, Coach. Would you be able to send some of the GPS cut-ups? Uh, yeah. Rather than just to you reach out to you on Twitter. Just contact or, me. Yeah, shoot him a message. Uh, a couple of questions here. What coaching point do you have to get to the wide receiver and the uh, get to get the wide receiver and the quarterback on the same page on the GPS route? Is that just from reps? Uh, I mean, really, guys. Like, think about it from a quarterback uh, standpoint. All right, even if you know where a glance is coming from, okay, so say we have a single receiver glance RPO. If this guy's pressed inside leverage and we have to get inside, the glance is going to happen almost on the hash. I was watching, uh, oh, this happened to OU. The, I was watching some OU film the other day, and he was like on the hash, which in practice, he's out here on the numbers, right? That's almost a 12 yard difference. So, Really, if you're reading a route or running a, a locked route that you can anticipate, it, you're still going to be blind because you're reading a defender, step up, then you have to visually find, just find the area that you think the receiver is in. So the reality is that they really don't ever have to be on the same page. 
Now he knows that it's a go post or sit and pre-snap, you know, and game plan wise, we practice, we know we're probably going to sit. Okay. Or we know we're probably going to go uh, just by what we're getting over here. Uh, but really, even if, even if they don't have a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they don't have a lot of uh, reps together. Uh, it shouldn't really, it was never a problem for us. Never. We completed like 70% of our GPSs and the other ones, except for one, were drops. We only threw one bad pass. The other, we had three or four drops uh, that were incompletions. So they're all catchable throws. Now we did practice this at least once a week. And I'd have every outside go twice, once a week, sometimes twice a week if it was really big in the game plan. So then you get a massive amount of banked reps over the, the course of an entire season. And that was also our only single receiver RPO. We never called glance. We never called sit. We never called anything locked. It was only GPS. But hopefully uh, you, that answers your question. Do you give the quarterback freedom uh, with regard to his footwork? Uh, no, but uh, guys, like whatever footwork you want to do is what you should do. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you know, you should step with the, with the play side foot first or the, you know, backside foot first. I mean, there's like so many ways to do it. Uh, you know, I do it the way that I learned it, but you know, I've had quarterback coaches that really want to stand, you know, stand up for what they like. And that's fine. As long as the mesh is on time. Uh, so I, I don't think it really matters as long as you believe in it and it, and it, the timing works for what you're trying to do. Good deal. Does uh, anybody else have any questions for coach? Any more questions? Before we depart. And obviously coach shared his contact information. So if anybody um, wants to follow up with him and uh, go over some, some stuff you learned today, uh, I'm sure he'd be glad to, to help some people out. So coach, I really appreciate you jumping on man, and uh, spending some time with us this morning. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> um, he,